So then I was basically inspired by this whole notion of the uh, Tijuana Bible and the erotic imagery, comic book kind of thing. But then also it was, you know, my work is very detail oriented. And, uh, and of course doing a piece on a wall this big and only having two weeks to do it, uh, doing something very graphic just with the line was easier and faster. And I could get the story done without uh, focusing on minute details. These kind of pieces, uh, sort of, you know, I, I had, I had the courage to do these piece, pieces, uh, pretty much due to the uh, to work that I was doing in sketchbooks. And it was because in sketchbooks I was doing something more immediate and not so time consuming. So then I was able to just to experiment with the line and have this graphic quality. And it would be dropping a weapon that would be basically be uh, a weapon that represents uh, the United States, or the weapon that's mostly in the news in the United States, and that was the handgun. And as I was, and as I was working on this whole notion of the figure clubbing each other, then uh, you know, being in the gallery and working with a crowd, uh, it starts influencing you. And I remember some lady mentioned that the piece seemed too heavy, so then I thought that I would do like a little uh, humor in it. So then I drew this rubber chicken and the, and the character you know, on the Mexican side. But then also it would be like a, like a little joke on immigration, el pollero, which is you know the, the people that smuggle um, uh, people across the board. And on the other hand, uh, the, the guy would be holding uh, the tail of the police. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, in, the, in the Frida's painting, uh, there's Frida, and her, and her hearts are exposed, and then there's this artery that unites them both, and she's severing the artery. And in this instance, I thought, well, you know, I didn't want to copy Frida's painting, so then I thought, well, I'll go back to the whole notion of a tale of two cities, and it would be basically uh, tale not, not as a story, but tale as an appendage. So then, sort of like this tale that would unite these two characters. The show ended, everybody left, and then the developers came back and they were going to do this into a retail uh, place. So then the drawing was destroyed and that was you know, a shame because I had worked on that two weeks and, I, and it you know, kind of hurt me. So then when I proposed this, this drawing for this gallery, you know, I was working directly on the wall and I know that nobody was going to buy the wall. So then I already came with the whole notion that, that the drawing would be destroyed. But I decided, well, instead of the gallery destroying it, I would destroy it. And that's where I came up with the whole notion of, of deconstruction, which is basically me painting these uh, white squares uh, all over the surface and basically destroying the drawing myself. <coughs> And the drawing, you know, usually is, is you know, my my way of working is very organic. So then I'm just creating these uh, freehand drawings on the wall. But then the deconstruction would be me painting uh, very meticulously and very planned, and uh, these white squares in acrylic. And it would, and I wanted it to make it sort of look very mechanical and very, uh, you know, sort of the antithesis of what this drawing originally was. Uh, and I came up with the whole notion of, of this grid. Um, usually when you're working on a mural, uh, they recommend that you put up a grid first and you start developing the mural that way. You start, you know, 
you have a preliminary sketch and then you grid that and then you grid the, the wall and then you just grab details and then, so then you're using the grid to construct the mural. In my instance, I, I create the drawing freehand on the wall, but then I'm using the grid to destroy the mural. And I've always wanted to basically, you know, I'm a draftsman, like I mentioned. I, I, I work with drawing, pencil and charcoal on canvas, on wood and paper. I'm not a painter. But I thought that, well, through this process, I'm becoming a painter. Because basically, usually the drawing is something that's uh, considered the preliminary sketch. All my work, the drawing is the finished piece. But here, uh, by painting these white squares, painting becomes the death of the drawing. And then I'm eliminating the narrative and just leaving like these faces and, and it just become, it starts becoming something else completely. You know, I created this, this narrative for two weeks. So then I thought that I would, uh, the deconstruction would be using the book, A Tale of Two Cities, as a template and basically just, again, pixelating the image out of existence. But to me, it's also, you know, I've created the story throughout two weeks, so then I thought that I would, painting these white squares was also opening the drawing to the viewer where you can insert your own story into the piece. And it's just basically, you can fill in the blanks and sort of recreate the narrative that I've been creating in these two uh, past two weeks. So it's not necessarily taking away from the piece, but it's just opening up, opening it up to, the, to you, to the viewer. And then also the same pixelation would sort of reflect the, uh, the position of the characters. And that's some seconds. That's the actual book that I read and I brought it with me and I used that as a template. And in the background, I, I, uh, I did the, uh, the city of Tijuana sort of confronting the tale, which would also be a metaphor for, this, for, the, for the border. And then on the other side, it would be this expanse of, uh, of, uh, of, of, of green grass, of grass, and then this, these two uh, palm trees representing California. But then also sort of like this expanse where, you know, it's just the whole notion of, you know, the grass is greener on the other side. And it's this, you know, this first image of immigration sort of looking at the United States in terms of the American dream, which is basically a dream. I titled it La Cola de Dos Ciudades, A Tale for Two Cities. <laughs> and, uh, and the last uh, part of this piece was basically having the book and do the, and do the two characters on each side. It's sort of my version of the book. <laughs> <laughs>